Join us, friends. Great Scott Spot Guy. Do they know what we have in store for them? They will if they tighten up. And don't double dribble. To the Grey Ghost Spot Guy? Exactly, old chum. No time to waste. To the Grey Ghost. We have not a minute to spare. It's showtime, friends. All right, all right, all right, all right. It is the Spot Guy, and it is... Globes riding with Trey. And we are not wishing a cotton was a monkey but we know that there's people that are. You know, I had an example today, Trey. What is that, Spock? I haven't told you about yet, but this, you know how, and, and well, the way I've tried to break this down, you know, we've talked about what Wishing Cotton Was a Monkey mm-hmm. was 49 episodes ago, I think. Yeah, something like that. And um, so just the basics of it, but I've tried to break it down and make it simpler to state when somebody asks you what wigwam is and basically where you pretend something is different than it really is, or you go through the motions in this particular case, you're going through the motions of something like you're accomplishing something, mm-hmm. but you're really not accomplishing anything. And it really, really bothers me. And uh, what it was is Lori and I, you've experienced this before. Lori and I went to Costco. Um, we've always had a Sam's club around here. They've recently built a Costco. And um, one thing about going into Costco that kind of messes with my mind is I've never really been in a Costco, but maybe one or two times, not as a customer, but uh, dealing with hot tubs because I was delivering a hot tub for somebody bought one from Costco. I've done that kind of stuff. But as a customer, I've never really been in Costco. So my whole life of going into that kind of a store has been Sam's Club. So Sam's Club is laid out in a very specific way. And pretty much all of them that you go in are very, very, very similar. Mm -hmm. So when you go into a Costco, it's like Sam's Club. It's got the same stuff in it, but it's all mixed up. It's everywhere. (laughs) It's just different. So it kind of messes with my mind because I'm in there and I'm looking and it's like, my mind wants it to be Sam's Club, Sam's Club but the, my reality is not Sam's Club. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm looking around and it's like, God, it's, I, where is that? You know, why is this here? This shouldn't be here. This should be over there. You know, so uh, Lori said, hey, I need you to come back here. She wanted to go do a big buy where we bought a lot of stuff that would last a long time, which is the purpose of of going there. So you buy big containers of, of paper towels and stuff like that. So she texts me. Um, actually, I was texting with you and she texted me and said, hey, you need to come back here and pick up the paper towels and all of that stuff. And I said, okay, where's that at? She said, well, I'm beside Dairy. And I, I lo- stood there and looked around the store. I don't see the word Dairy anywhere. So I said, what aisle are you on? And she couldn't tell me. So I just decided if I, if I was here, this is where I would put it. So I started heading back that way and I finally found her and the dairy sign can only be seen if you're standing where she was. Yeah. No one else. It's on the side of the wall there by these three or four things in the very back of the store. So anyway, I found her, but that's not what the wigwam was, what the wigwam was. And I see it. It really, really bothers me is when you're leaving. So we bought a lot of stuff. There was two carts full. So we're standing there trying to get out where this person is pretending to look at the receipt and look at the stuff in these two carts, all these items, like they're pretending like they're, they're going to find something. My question to them would be, did you, how many times in a day do you find something in a cart that's not on a receipt? And I told Lori this. I said, I bet you the answer is zero. Yeah. It's, and I'll give you another example. That's wigwam to me. We're pretending. And I, the only thing, the only saving grace to it is, is as a security measure, that would be a way that people wouldn't put five items in their cart. They may sneak one item in the cart and hope you don't find it, but they wouldn't put five items in the cart. Or inversely, it may be a thing where 
a person's not going to fill a card up and try to walk out like right. they would do at Walmart or other places. But if they did, what are they going to do? Boy, where's your receipt? And they're out. They're gone. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's I could see where it would be. It's kind of like um, in the world of, of us having guns as Americans. Yeah. For some people that live in other countries, they think that this is the Wild West and us having guns is somehow this uh, it makes it dangerous. I think it's actually the other way. I think the the for instance, if you decide that you're going to walk in a church in Texas and rob a church or walk in a convenience store in Texas, the likelihood of you encountering somebody with a gun is probably very high. So I think maybe them being at the exit there to check your receipt is on some level that, okay? But I'll give you one more example before we move on. And that's not what this podcast is about at all, friends. This is actually going to be about Bruce Lee, believe it or not, in Ch -ch 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 Chinatown in Los Angeles, where Trey and I have actually stayed multiple times in, in Los Angeles, Chinatown. And I really, really like Chinatown. But anyway, let's get back to this. One more quick example that I could think of is the old bill marking pen where you hand them a hundred dollar bill and they take this pen out and they swipe it on the bill to see if it's real. Have you seen them do that? Uh -uh. Okay. So that's a thing. They have these pens that supposedly if they mark on a bill, if it's a fake bill, it's, it's a different color. So my question has already always been, I remember Chick-fil-A specifically doing that. My question to them was, the lady, I asked the lady one day when I saw her do it, I said, how many times have you ever found a counterfeit bill doing that? She said, never. I said, so the joke is really on you. The pen company is the one <laughs> that played the joke on you because they've sold you something. It don't work. That Well, it does work, but the likelihood of somebody walking into Chick-fil-A to pass a $100 bill and you spending the time to take a pen out and swipe it on that bill, the lost time that you did that, the money you paid for the pen, all the things that you that went into that one little thing doesn't add do not up. outweigh the possibility. So we're pretending that that is stopping you from passing fake bills. Right. See, it's just I, the it, and I and I'm not against security measures. Don't get me wrong. It's just those things that blow my mind. It's like we do things to pretend like they actually are something other than what they really are. You know, and I don't like to waste time. And in my opinion, marking that bill with that pen is a waste of time or standing there and pretend that lady, I, Lori, you should see the look on Lori's face because she knows how I feel about it. And so I'm standing there. She's got her cart and this lady's got a receipt this long. And I'm standing behind her with my cart. And that lady's looking at the receipt and going. And Lori looks back at me like, please don't say anything. <laughs> Finding every item in there. <laughs> She's not fine. That's not my point. She's not looking at every item. So you've got 50 items and she looks at 10. What is that? That don't make sense. Yeah. It's, I, I don't I don't understand it. So as long as I make sure I have my 10 items there, I can take another 40 or 50 of them and be all right. Yeah, well, you slip the, the thing you stole under everything where yeah. she's because she's not going to take it out. Yeah. I watched the lady. I watched both wow. of them. They're yeah. not taking everything out. They're just kind of going, it's a pretend security measure. You know, they're pretending like they're really looking at your receipt and then really looking at what's in the cart. And it just, it blows my mind. But anyway. Wow. I, I, I digress on that because I'm sure there's people going to go, oh, man, that's a security measure there. You know, it works and it's a, OK, that's fine. It just seems wickwam to me. We so should. anyway, let's fast forward to Los Angeles, Ch -ch 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 Chinatown. And um, we actually have a, uh, a hotel that we stay in there that's very nice. They have great breakfast with that little link sausage that I love <laughs> and um, uh, and eggs. We They had moved it to a different place, but I love, for those of you that don't know, I like bacon and I like link sausage. I don't like smoked sausage. I really don't care for ham, but I like link sausage. Um, and Lori has got, so she 
she'll make it. When I was at the, in fact, let's go back to when I was living at the museum building it, when I was living in Memphis and building that, I would buy that Jimmy Dean link sausage. You could buy, I think it was 50 pack. And in the morning I would make myself um, uh, strudel and I would, would microwave a couple of pieces of that link sausage. Yeah. It was always really, really good. And uh, so anyway, when we go to Los Angeles, that's a place that we could stay. And in my mind, I kind of thought that Chinatown would be dangerous because it's kind of the way that it's portrayed in the in movies. Chan <laughs> movies and all that. In fact, really just a block or a block and a half from our hotel is where a scene from a Jackie Chan movie with Chris Tucker is shot yeah, in, a, in a Chinese restaurant. Rush Hour 2, wasn't it? Rush Hour 2, yeah. Okay. And uh, so I've actually put that in a video, which that's also, you could see from where that restaurant is that's in the movie. If you look through, you could see the Bruce Lee statue. Right. Yeah. They have an awesome Bruce Lee statue of him, right, Billy? Way larger than Bruce Lee. And really? it looks like him. No, like it. They do. But it does look like him. Yeah. Good job in his, in his uh, uh, um, uh, karate pose. Yeah. He's ripped in that thing, boy. <laughs> yeah. And the cool thing is, like, uh, if you go there during the day, uh, they actually, some of those little businesses around it actually have Bruce Lee things they sold. I think you bought a uh, $1,000 bill. Or I bought a, a million dollar bill. A million dollar bill. Bruce Lee's picture on it. Bruce Lee's picture. I, I, bought I looked at it and went, Bruce Lee on a million dollar bill? I'll take one of those. Did right. I put it in my cabinet? Probably did. It was really cool. It had his image. It was, it was I really I don't think big. I brought it down here yet. I wish I had it. I would, I would show it. Um, but the, uh, and I may run, go get it. I, what did, what did I do with it? Did I bring it down here? Dang on. I wish I'd have thought of that before we, we started filming. But, uh, anyway, I, I bet you I have a picture of it. So, um, anyway, I'm going to, I'm going to search for, for Chinatown. So anyway, uh, tell them a little bit about, uh, some of the things that you saw there, Trey. Well, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Um, I know the first time we went out there, it seemed like everything closed down really early. As far as there was all these restaurants and businesses, everything shut down in Ch Ch Chinatown. And, uh, uh, but it's, you can walk around that area, it's a few blocks. Um, there's the breakfast, by the way. There's a lot of lights strung. Yep. Yep. And, uh, it's just an interesting place, but that uh, that Bruce Lee statue is a, a picture um, uh, place that you need to stop at if you are, are a fan of Bruce Lee and then explore the stores that are around it. There's some nightclubs out there in that area. Uh, there's um, a lot of little restaurants. I couldn't uh, read the menus on most of them, but uh, <laughs> right, Billy? I, yeah, and uh, it, it, uh, something that I thought was really funny, I don't know if you saw this or not, but it was not the one. And you know what? I did not take a picture of the million dollar bill. I can't believe uh, what in the world. What was I thinking? And uh, but anyway, um, I don't know if you saw this, but it tripped me out. Because as you mentioned there, where we were at with the Bruce Lee statue, there's a lot of shops. And I actually bought something uh, for uh, some family members from one of those shops where I bought the million dollar bill. Uh, those little cats with the waving Oh, yeah, yeah. I, bought, I bought some of those and uh because I thought that that they would get a kick out of that and they did. Did they? And um, but if you walk through, there's a couple of places there where it's kind of like walking through a mall, uh, like an arcade type mall where you walk in one end and there's stores on both sides and you walk out the other end. Yeah. And it's all Chinese shops and it kind of weaves like that, and it has um Something that I noticed, and I filmed all this, and I'm sure you filmed uh, all that too. I haven't edited this particular time and put it out yet. But one of the things that I remember is they had a lot of kitty rides that had popular um, uh, characters like Mickey Mouse. You remember mm -hmm. seeing Mickey Mouse and mm -hmm. Minnie Mouse, these rides and different things like that. So the where you walk through, the mall is really wide. And when I say a mall, it's still outdoors but there's a roof over your head in this particular place that I was talking about. So I'm weaving through this thing and there's people. I was surprised like you, because the last time we were there, 
which was pre-COVID. Wasn't it 2019 when we stayed there? Yeah, 2019. You're so right. that was pre-COVID. They basically rolled the sidewalk up at about eight o'clock. Yeah. Um, and it seems like what night were we there? Well, it was during the week this time. Mm -hmm. It seemed like the last time it was on the weekend, but maybe it was during the week. But uh, something that stuck out to me this time was they didn't roll the sidewalk up. There was a lot of people out. Yeah. But it may be because of COVID, everybody was tired of being out. Now everybody goes out. You know, yeah. they got tired of being stuck. Yeah, the restaurants were open this time. I, I, I a didn't, lot of restaurants. I there didn't was stop in any. I don't know if you stopped in any, Billy. I didn't. Well, know. that's what I wanted to tell you about. This is what tripped me out. I, I did not expect to see this, and I don't know if you saw it or not. Um, but I saw a Nashville hot chicken restaurant in that little mall. Now it's all Chinese stuff. And then one Nashville hot chicken restaurant. Yeah. That kind of tripped me. It literally said Nashville hot chicken. That's crazy. Yeah. I, I wouldn't have expected to see that there at all. But what I love about, uh, Chinatown is I'm able to walk a block and a half or two blocks to Bruce Lee's dojo. Yep. Uh, from the sixties where there's some really cool photos of Bruce Lee inside that dojo uh, with his, his students and a, uh, some photos of him inside with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, mm -hmm. one of his friends and students. And there was some photos of Bruce Lee in his nice uh, car parked right outside the, uh, on the sidewalk in front of it that I was able to line up. Also and, a dog, that big and dog. A picture of Bruce, with his, his dog. Mm -hmm. That's right there in the front. I mean, there's just all kind of really cool things that I found, but that building is still there. And um, that's always a highlight for me to, to walk uh, to Bruce Lee's uh, dojo and just kind of stand there and, and just take it all in, just knowing that once upon a time, the main man, that Bruce Lee was the man. He was Bruce right Lee there. Was man, and literally you, right there. And you could have, and you could have, taking karate lessons with Bruce Lee at that moment in time of our earth right there. You could have been there. I would have been too lessons. intimidated to go in there with Bruce Lee. Oh, then I wouldn't have, I would have gone <laughs> up and try to, you know, talk to him and stuff like that. Yeah. But, but man, that's the cool part about Chinatown. That's why you need to explore it. If you're ever in that area. And I walked all over it filming and I did not feel unsafe one time. Did you? No, I haven't felt, felt unsafe. We walked, I walked in the middle of the night. Yeah, I walked all over. The, it, it was both times we did that at night. Yeah. I walked over. There's a school out there. Uh, have basketball nice, courts and stuff. Have yeah. Nice basketball courts that I love. And uh, I walked behind Bruce Lee's dojo up another two blocks up a hill. And uh, I saw, like, you know, people had their Christmas lights all lit up and stuff, you know. And it was in December when we were there. And uh, um, or no, November. And uh, uh, it was just really cool. Really cool. And we hope to be able to get inside the building to do the lineups inside, but we've never found anybody there. Now, I, I thought, think it's occupied now. I don't know if it is or not. It looks like it's closed back now, but I thought they had opened a dojo back up in there. But I'm saying, I think somebody's rented it and they're storing stuff or something. Before, it was just empty. It was just empty. Yeah, yeah. 2019. Yeah. But, There's but stuff damn, in it now. That was Bruce Lee's karate dojo, Billy. Yeah, that's pretty wild. You know, I mean, and this was before he becomes a uh, superstar with his movies. Uh, you know, he was in America. He was on um, the Green Hornet at this time and during this time period. And he was trying to become more after the Green Hornet. Mm -hmm. And he was just getting shot down here in America, you know, because of, you know, uh, of his who he was, you know, his ordination is Chinese being Chinese and, and stuff like that. You know, they didn't think he could be a leading man and boy, did he prove him wrong? Didn't he? Mm -hmm. He proved him wrong. <laughs> now, a little interesting detail. And I correct me if I'm wrong about this, but I think that I'm, I'm pretty sure that I'm right is he made a cameo in cannonball run as the green Hornet. I believe it's him in the car in the green Hornet in the movie cannonball run. I don't know. Are you are you familiar with the movie? I'm not. Oh man, you you got to go watch Cannibal Run. It's got uh, uh, Dean Martin and Sammy Davis Jr. as priests <laughs> driving a Ferrari in the Cannonball Run. And uh, let me look real quick. Uh, I'm pretty sure that I'm that I'm right about that. That he is in Cannonball Run. Yeah, that's 1984. Jackie Chan. 
So it was Jackie Chan <laughs> playing him. Okay, there you go. Hey, Bruce died in in the 70s. Uh, okay, well, there you go. So so that tells you my knowledge of Bruce Lee, but that also tells you that they were doing that was a cameo. That was a shout out to Bruce Lee by Jackie Chan in that movie. Well, uh, so th that's a good point. I'm glad you brought Jackie Chan up. So, so when Bruce Lee passes away, uh, I believe in 1972, um, or it was 73, July 20th, 1973, mm -hmm. Bruce Lee, untimely death. He's 32 years old, spy guy. Mm -hmm. And um, he had just filmed... Um, our Enter the Dragon was about to be released, mm -hmm. which is the movie that made him a bona fide superstar. Mm -hmm. That that Enter the Dragon movie, um, really awesome movie. But so when Bruce Lee died in 1973, it left it, it just left a bad feeling to the movie world because they needed a needed Bruce Lee. Here was this guy that everybody now loved and now he's gone and there's no more movies. So what did they do over there? They start, they had actors play like they were Bruce Lee and they had all these um, movies, which there's a documentary I stumbled on the other day. I want to watch where they track down these actors. There's some guys like me and you, they've mm -hmm. made a film where they track down these actors and got interviews with them and kind of took them back about how this happened and stuff like that. So there's like all these movies, like 30, 40, 50 movies made, made, made. But then Jackie Chan came along and Jackie Chan became, took over Bruce Lee's part when mm -hmm. Bruce Lee had started. And Jackie Chan did it in a way where he put comedy into martial arts. Mm -hmm. And then I guess us Americans love that. Oh, I love those rush hour. Oh, movies. Hey, yeah. I was a kid, man, yeah. that rush hour, Jackie mm -hmm. Chan and, and Tucker, yeah, man, they were mm -hmm. awesome. And Jackie Chan was so good, mm -hmm. so fast, so fast. And it's great to know he did all of his stunts. Mm -hmm. This guy did all of his stunts. But but it was Bruce Lee died in 73. Jackie Chan in the 80s takes over. But in between Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan was all these people trying to act like they were Bruce Lee in movies. They had black Bruce Lees. They had fat Bruce Lees. They had actors that really looked just like Bruce Lee. There was one actor that really looked like Bruce Lee. And it stuff. sounds like ETAs to me, Elvis tribute artists, but go ahead. <laughs> exactly. It, hey, that's a good analogy. Yeah. But man, uh, you know, I've watched some of these movies because I'm a big Bruce Lee fan, man. And there's one movie where they took um, Game of Death. Was it Game of Death? It was the movie where Bruce Lee fights Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Hmm. Okay, he was filming this movie when he died. He didn't get to finish the movie. That's the so they took footage from this movie and made a movie with a guy that was playing Bruce Lee. So they would do shots like over his shoulder, and then they would splice in real shots from the movie of really Bruce. And then they would need another shot that Bruce didn't film, and it was another guy that was Bruce. And then one shot was a wide shot, and they literally printed a face of Bruce Lee on a cardboard and put it on the actor. In a wow. shot. And you can tell it is. And then it's back to really Bruce Lee kicking yeah. his butt. You know, it's terrible, Billy. It's terrible because of the editing. And so now they could do deep fake stuff and have Bruce Lee really in a movie. Yeah. Well, it's it's when he wore that famous yellow suit. Yeah. That's the movie that he was filming when he died. Wow. Uh, uh, so I, I'm just fascinated by just like Elvis and Pistol Pete and people that I really admire and enjoy learning their life stories. I, I'm, I'm fascinated as well by Bruce Lee, of course, Chuck Norris. And I think I, here's a uh, Chuck Norris autograph that I have. My first one is yeah. Ray, a friend, Chuck Norris. But right here, I think I have, uh, actually now that I'm looking at it, I have this Bruce Lee. I have some Bruce Lee sunglasses that I bought. That's just like what? Oh, you yes. Know. You wear those. Yeah. I wear them all the time. It has this logo on them. And uh, I, I like this stuff because, you know, Bruce Lee had all these cool quotes. Mm -hmm. And like on this, it says, and this is just so true. And I hope everybody listens. Bruce Lee said, live a life worth remembering. Mm -hmm. 
I think he did in his 32 years of his life. We're still and, talking about him. And look, I don't know as much about him as you do by any stretch, but I agree that he's legend. Yeah. Oh, Bruce Lee was a badass. Yeah. And the thing is, why was he like that? He was passionate. He mm -hmm. loved, he loved his martial arts. He loved uh uh being in shape. And uh, you know, he was he and Chuck Norris were very close. Chuck Norris became an actor because of Bruce. Chuck was competing in a tournament in New York City, one of his karate tournaments, and Bruce Lee came to the match uh, there in Madison Square Garden, and Chuck won. And after the match, he and Chuck walked back to the hotel, and they get on the elevator, and they get off on Chuck's um, uh, uh, floor, and Chuck Norris said that Bruce Lee and I probably got off that elevator about 12 that night, and he and I did a workout there in the hallway until about six or seven in that morning. They talked, just had a good time. The time got away from them. Next thing they knew it was seven in the morning, man, how incredible is that? You know? And then, and then the thing is Chuck gets a call one day, spa guy and it's Bruce. And he says, Hey Chuck, he says, uh, I'm doing this movie over here in, in um, at the Coliseum in Rome. And I've got a part for you that I think that would be perfect for you. And uh, Chuck, Chuck said, well, who wins? And Bruce said, I win. I'm the star of this movie. And Chuck said, oh, I see. I see. You want me be in your movie so you can beat the world champion. And Bruce Lee said, no, I want you in my movie so I can kill the world champion. <laughs> and that is that cool movie, uh, Way of the Dragon where Bruce Lee and Chuck Norris has the most epic fight scene in the Coliseum in Rome fights the death, Bruce Lee and Chuck Norris, a young Chuck Norris without a beard. And I think Chuck put you in a headlock just like he did with Bruce. You know like what he did? I can, uh, I'll show you the photo. Um, that was, uh, <laughs> that was a scary day. Um, think, about, think about Chuck Norris. So anyway, you know, Chuck has told stories of Bruce. He said that Bruce would take around a, um, a uh, piece of wood, Billy. And he would just, he would punch that wood in his free time to toughen up his knuckles. Wow. Yeah. And uh, uh, there's really cool footage of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in the backyard. Yeah, there's Chuck back. Norris with me in a headlock. <laughs> and look, he pulled down on me a little bit. He was nice, but he, 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 Hey, it was so cool just knowing that I was in a headlock by Chuck Norris, man. All yeah. the movies and the and the Tex Walker Texas Rangers that yeah. I saw Chuck pull this move off. You know, I told him, I said, Chuck, you just got to do one thing for me. He was like, What? He said, Can I get a picture of you putting me in the headlock? Oh, okay. All right. All right. That's what he did, you know. And that's that cool moment there. And shout you know, out to our friends on uh another podcast, uh Roundhouse Roulette, Adam and the fellas. Y'all get a chance. That's a Walker, Texas Ranger uh, podcast. If you get a chance to listen, they go over uh, episodes of Walker, Texas Ranger and analyze them. Roundhouse Roulette. Yeah. Great guys. Great guys. Yeah. Man, Bruce Lee. So the other night for the first time, actually, uh, I, I watched Bruce Lee's first movie, Fist of Fury. Fury. But I think it was called The Big Boss. The Big Boss, I believe, is what it was called. Mm -hmm. And um, the uh, Fist of Fury was was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. It took place at a um, at like an ice, like an, a, a, a business, an ice company mm -hmm. that like, I guess, you know, ships ice out. Mm -hmm. And it was like a, a, the, a, a, a foundry, like, a, you know, they had all kind of equipment and stuff. Yeah. And of course, you know the people running that place were not were up to no good. Naturally, I, a lot of people in the ice business I found are up to no good. But go yeah, ahead. well, they were, and I'm not going to give the movie away, but they were doing stuff with ice. And of course, these poor guys working there had no clue. You know, they're getting taken advantage of. You know. Yeah. And uh, anyway, Bruce Lee stumbles into this world with a job, but he had promised his mama in this movie. Uh, his uncle picks him up, and he promised his mom by a necklace that he wore that he would not get in, in, into any more fights. So he always had this necklace on until somebody decided to punch Bruce Lee in this movie. 
and Bruce Lee snaps, you know, in, a, in that instant and just takes care of like 15 people by himself. And his cousins were like, man, man, I didn't know cousin Bruce could fight, could fight like that. You know, and they're just all like, and it's, 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 uh, it's, uh, English voices over their natural voice. It was so funny, you know, be like you and I talking over these guys voices, you know, but anyway, anyway, in that fight, Billy, Bruce Lee's necklace was broken. You know, I've had that similar situation where somebody snatched my necklace off. Snatched his necklace off. Yeah. Well, so think about this. So that was that cool scene where he picks up and the necklace was broken. So now he can fight. You know, Bruce Lee mm-hmm. now can fight in this movie. So anyway, it was just a great, it's a cool story. And I was really, I was really um, I was thinking to myself afterwards, I was like, man. I would like to contact the people that uh, did the fight scenes because it really looked real how they had people's knives get thrown into them, Mm -hmm. blood and stuff. I don't know how they pulled it off back then like they did. Whoever edited that and and shot that did a great job because it was believable to me. You know, sometimes you can see things. Yeah. they, They made it look like knives actually went into people. Wow. And stuff and crazy stuff that happened. So, I saw a scene recently where uh, it was Bruce and there was a bunch of guys. Bruce wasn't in the front. He was uh, behind, kind of standing behind him, but it was like this redneck guy that was it, trying to intimidate all these guys. And he punched a few of them, but then Bruce got on him and <laughs> he went crazy on that guy. What is that movie? <laughs> it was a redneck. It might have been, it may have been. Um... Uh, Way of the Dragon. It may have been the Chuck Norris one. It's it was a was redneck it? looking guy with it was like a white a, man, right? It was like a... an Afro type. Yeah. Oh no. Okay. So that it was a white guy, but he had kind of a uh, Afro type hair. Enter the yeah. Dragon. Is it Enter the Dragon? It was Enter the Dragon. He it was went nuts so, on that guy. So let's go back to that. So so uh, so Bruce makes the big boss uh, fist of fury now. He also made a uh, way of the dragon. That's Chuck Norris in the Rome. Okay. He made game of death. All right. Uh, no Fist, way of the dragon. He made, he, he made enter the dragon. All right. After way of the dragon, enter the dragon. And then why he died when he died, he was shooting what was going to be game of death. Mm. With, that's the yellow suit. Everybody knows. Yeah. Mostly, right. All right, so Bruce died in 73. Right after Bruce died, Enter the Dragon premieres, and Bruce becomes a worldwide superstar. I like James Dean. Unbelievable. Yeah. So this guy, Bruce Lee, who all he wanted to do was be an actor, was be a movie star, and he worked his butt off just like he did with martial arts to achieve what he did, and he took chances. He didn't let people tell him that he couldn't do something. He didn't let big executives tell him that he was Chinese and no nobody's gonna believe that he that because he knew he knew who he was and what he had. He had he had martial arts that no one else had. He was different. Uh, so what ha- what he had to do was he had to leave America, Billy, and he had to go back home to Hong Kong, and that's where he became a superstar. He started making movies over there. All right to show America what he could do. And then it started picking up here in the United States. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So Bruce had to, he had to do what, what like McConaughey has had to do. do. He had to tell the executives he wasn't doing what they wanted him to do. He wanted to do what he wanted to do. He had to take a chance. And it luckily it worked out for McConaughey. Now he does dramas and Mm -hmm. he he plays those seedy characters where before he was the guy next door uh, on those chick flicks that he had Mm -hmm. to do, you know, and, uh, and McConaughey started turning down money and start, stopped taking scripts. And um, luckily, uh, uh, the lawyer show came, the movie. Yeah, Lincoln Lawyer. Lincoln yeah. Lawyer came and it changed everything for McConaughey. It was the same thing with Bruce Lee. He had to leave the United States because all he was getting here in the United States was bit parts. And he's on some TV shows where he's the martial arts trainer. He's on the Green Hornet. Of course, that was his breakout. Was the yeah. Green Hornet. Before then, he was doing his, his, his karate classes in Seattle and, and then into in Los Angeles, he got, he, uh, Sam now, did he have two dojos there? Was that a, a dojo? And there was another one in Los Angeles or was I, that the only one? I think that was the only one, but I'm not certain. So let's, you know, okay. we'll have to research that one out. Okay. Uh, but there's a really good book on Bruce Lee by Matthew Polly. It's kind of like a, uh, last train to Memphis book. 
Mm -hmm. uh, this guy has done his research and done interviews and talked with everyone and has put this story together. And I, I, I believe after reading that book and learning facts that we just didn't know about, I believe just like he made a point in the book, I believe Bruce Lee died because he had surgery like mm -hmm. two or three weeks before his death. Mm -hmm. Get the sweat glands out of his armpits. He didn't like how he sweated in movies. He didn't like how it looked on screen. So he had uh, had some kind of glands removed. And after that, he started getting dehydrated. And he started he started getting dizzy and, and things like that. And supposedly he had passed out a few weeks earlier in a bathroom in the studios uh, uh, at back there. And I mean, in, in where, where the studios were in his town. And uh, uh, I really do believe that he died of um you know of something that was crazy to get that surgery man did he not know about secret you strong know. enough for a man but made for a woman <laughs> you know ancient chinese secret i don't know that yeah, what is that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a big, that's a mixture of several things from the 70s but never mind uh, i digress go ahead all right. Well, I wanted to do something here because well, I wanted to bring up another little point about Chinatown, which is it blew my mind that we didn't notice it last time we were there. Uh, and that was it's right beside Dodger Stadium. Yeah. It's see, right there. Yeah. The, the thing is, is Dodger Stadium is up on top of a mountain or a real tall hill and Chinatown's down here. So when you're down in Chinatown, you don't realize that you that the stadium is up over your head right there. It is. It's right there. It. From the hotel room, I could see the edge of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I did was, well, you were with me. What I did was went up there and then had to send the glory up to be able to see it because you couldn't get up to it. So I wanted to do something, Billy. I wanted to, I, I'm fascinated by some of the quotes that he said during his lifetime. Mm -hmm. And I wanted, I just wanted to read some of them. You know, I read the one about live a life worth remembering. I thought that was pretty cool. But uh, there's a few other things like Bruce Lee said once says, don't feel don't fear failure, not failure, but low aim is the crime in great attempts. It is glorious even to fail. That's what Bruce Lee said. I like this one right here. Spy guy. Mistakes are always forgivable if one has the courage to admit them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. And the thing about failure is there's nobody that has done anything significant that bats a thousand. Has a, has a, hey, I like this one. I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once, but I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. That's it. That's what he did. That's Bruce Lee. That's Bruce Lee, right? Mm -hmm. Bruce Lee said, pain will leave you once it has finished teaching you. Now read that again. <laughs> Pain will leave you once it has finished teaching you. Um, he said, I'm not in this world to live up to your expectations and you're not in this world to live up to mine. <laughs> I like that one. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, it's just amazing that the, the, you know, his favorite one is be water. My friend, he was, yeah. in, he like used water as an analogy about life and how water is just an endless stream. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a really fascinating. You can watch that. Uh, uh, there's a interview of him on YouTube uh, saying this. Uh, Bruce Lee, Lee also said, knowing is not enough. We must apply. Willing is not enough. We must do. So mm -hmm. that's, that's some powerful words right there. Bruce Lee said, don't speak negatively about yourself, even as a joke. Your body doesn't know the difference. Words are energy and cast spells. That, that's why it's called spelling. Change the way you speak about yourself and you can change your life. What you're not changing, you're also choosing. Interesting, right? Well, that's a biblical principle. You don't speak. The things that you speak have power. Hey, li listen at this one, Billy. And this is what I was talking about a while ago. Bruce Lee also said, you just wait. I'm going to be the biggest Chinese star in the world. <laughs> I like that one. He made that happen, didn't he? He did. Let's see. 
Bruce Lee said, do not pray for an easy life. Pray for the strength to endure a difficult one. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Bruce Lee also said, the more that we value things, the less we value ourselves. <laughs> now, the Elvis tie with Bruce and uh, Chuck is Kyrie. Yeah, and Bruce Lee was an Elvis fan. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a picture of Bruce Lee with an Elvis uh, record. Mm -hmm. so, Elvis never met Bruce, though. So, so think about that. Bruce Lee was like you and I. He, he was a fan of, uh, of Elvis. Mm -hmm. And you know Elvis had to be a fan of Bruce. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Because of that. Bruce Lee said the successful warrior is the average man with loser-like focus. <laughs> Laser-like focus. That is a, so yeah. let me read that one guys. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know some people with loser life. Yeah. Focus, yeah I just, I just talked to a few people there, but the, it's not you losers. It's the successful warrior is the average man with laser like focus. And uh, I need laser like eyes to make sure I can see loser and laser <laughs> differently. You know? uh, yeah. Loser like focus. That'll be used against me. Oh, Hey, there's some people out there with loser like focus. They're the ones that will use that against me. <laughs> um, hey, here's a good one, spy guy. From Bruce Lee's mouth. He said, showing golf is the fool's idea of glory. <laughs> Real living is living for others. Never waste energy on worries or negative thoughts. All problems are brought into existence. Drop them. <laughs> Another biblical principle. Just drop them. Now, this is kind of interesting, Billy, and this is kind of um, uh, uh, dealing with what you're going through, Billy. Now, listen to what Bruce Lee said on this one. Yeah, hold on. I missed, I missed a little Tied something. up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll end it on this one. I think this was a big one right here. All right. You know what Bruce Lee also said? And this one can speak to a few people. If you don't want to slip up tomorrow, speak the truth today. That's it. You if you say the truth every time, you don't have to remember what you said. You're right about that. And in the future, it doesn't, you know, you know, make you slip up. That's right. You ended on that one, spot guy. Yeah. Well, we still got uh, a couple of minutes. Um, but that's uh, very, very cool stuff. He was a fascinating person for sure. Yeah, he was. Um, and, you know, and just you got to think about that because of Bruce Lee. We have Chuck Norris. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Jackie Chan. We have uh, people, uh, uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme. You have, you know, people like that, uh, Steven Seagal, that oh, make those yeah. type of movies that we enjoyed. I mean, I, I love those type of movies. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm a martial artist just because I've watched so much Bruce Lee and Chuck Norris, mm -hmm. you know, and, and uh, studied. The and stuff. you actually have a black belt from Chuck Norris. That bad boy right there. So I'm going to say that Trey is a black belt right there. Look, from Grandmaster Chuck Norris, Trey has a black belt. And this is a special edition. This is number 21 of 25. You see that? Mm -hmm. And it used to be in the Tiger Man Karate Dojo and Museum, Billy, with Kung Ree and Chuck Norris and Bruce Lee's photo. Mm -hmm. But, um, he'll, you know, I um, made sure to protect that. Well, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, you're an honorary black belt in karate. Well, it was a cool way that I won that. One that I made a video uh, for Chuck Norris's 80th birthday. They had like an, uh, they had a contest on his uh, kickstart for kids thing. And uh, so, of course, I had to make a video that wished Chuck a happy 80th birthday, right? So, my video, of course, is, you know, how I, I do, you guys watch my shows and stuff. I uh, told my story of how he's influenced me in my life and I shared photos with Chuck. And Miss Norris, you know, because I've had a, you know, I've been able to hang out with them, and um, and you know, I, you know, they know me, right? They absolutely know Trey. they hey, hey, y'all, listen to me. I promise you, when Trey walked up and talked to them, they knew who he was. Miss Norris, you should have seen her light up 
when she saw, was, when she saw you. Yeah, and I hadn't seen them in a few years, but yeah. uh, um, I just and I was and I filmed you hanging out with Chuck and Gina. I just really, I really, I'm just telling you, they're they're great people. They're great yeah. people. They live. They're Christians, and they uh, Chuck Norris is. He's a better person in real life than he is on his movies and TV shows, if you can even believe that. Because yeah. he's so cool on the shows, you know. And, of course, the shows and movies are what made me know him. But uh, just to be able to talk to him, and he's very um, – he he he's so kind that he he makes everybody feel special. I guess you say that. Mm -hmm. Every fan that meets him, you know, every person that talks to him, he gives them time. And uh, he's just – he's definitely a great role model to look up to. There's no doubt about that. And um, and I just it's cool knowing there's a photo of Chuck, Bruce and Kung Ree. It is. Yeah, that's that Elvis connection. And yeah. Chuck, Chuck actually hung out with Elvis in Vegas. Mm -hmm. and Chuck gave Priscilla karate lessons. There's okay. canceled checks mm -hmm. from Elvis to Chuck Norris. And I uh, I told Priscilla, I, uh, I told Chuck that. She, he told me if I was ever around Priscilla again to tell Priscilla that Chuck Norris said hello to her. And I did tell Priscilla a few weeks later at when I was in Memphis and she was so happy to talk about Chuck. So I could, I could say when I brought his name up to her, I could tell, I could tell that, that uh, friendship and connection. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and when I brought Priscilla's name to Chuck, he, 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 he perked up and liked talking about Priscilla too. So mm -hmm. that was, you know, and you got to think Chuck taught Priscilla back then. He taught Steve McQueen. He taught Bob Barker. And you know how cool Bob Barker beats up uh happy go. Uh, yeah. That's that that because of Chuck. As yeah. those, are those Chuck Norris punches. Yeah. And uh, when Bob Barker turned 90, I believe no 90 or no, it was a, uh, it was one of the, maybe his last show on the uh, Price is Right or one of those specials on CBS. Chuck Norris surprised him and was a guest and came out so think about it all came with bruce yeah it's all everybody's together there man and bruce lee invited chuck norris into that movie and the rest is history that's cool well friends this is the end of episode two season two so this is two two and uh i had a great time in chinatown well next time we're in la we'll probably stay there again uh, one last thing about that hotel, it is a Best Western, and you could park under it so your vehicle is safe while you're staying there. So uh, highly recommended. Uh, I think it's called Best Western Chinatown, right? Yeah, it is. What's it's called. But it's a great place to stay, and we enjoyed it, and it uh, uh, was just a lot of fun. And we will see y'all, or you can hear us next week. Thank y'all so much for watching or listening. Tighten up every chance you get. And guys, yeah. one more thing before I let you go, I just want to say one more quote from Bruce Lee. Knowledge will give you, let me start again. Knowledge will give you power, but character, respect. Bruce Lee, don't double dribble. And tighten up. Yeah.